Known as Canada's queen of R&B, Julie Black has won multiple Juno Awards for her work as a singer and songwriter. She's written for Destiny's Child, Missy Elliott, and has toured with the Black Eyed Peas. And now she's adding musical theater to her incredible list of accomplishments. She is starring in the Toronto production of Tony Kushner and Janine Tesori's play, Caroline of Change, on now at the Winter Garden Theater. And we're pleased to bring Julie Black to our studio tonight. Hi. Hi, gorgeous. Hi, it's hi. nice to have you here. <laughs> nice to be here. Um, lots to talk about, but yes. before we do that, I want to show a clip of your performance in Caroline Will Change. Oh. Uh, Lorraine, please hello. Been 22 years of cleaning. For all them years, I worked and prayed. Every day, I doing laundry. 39 and still a This isn't the mm. first time that you've been on the stage, but it is your first starring role. Mm -hmm. um, what does this moment mean for you to carry a play of this magnitude? Whew, this moment is, is really defining. Uh, it's more so carrying the, the voice of Caroline and of every domestic of all walks of life, but especially black women. Uh, my mom was a domestic in Jamaica in 1968. So she told me stories of, um, of working for a white family that gave her the opportunity. In fact, she needed $200 to come to Canada. Mm. And they wanted her to go, you know? So she embraced the change. The difference with Caroline is Caroline's afraid of change. Well, describe, I wanna talk more about your mom. Yeah. Let's talk about Caroline for a few minutes. Yeah. Um, how would you describe Caroline? Well, number one, she isn't a victim. Mm. She's, um, you know, she, she's a strong woman. She's a, a mother of four. Her husband's gone off to war. She's, she endured domestic abuse, but she divorced him. And that was taboo in that time. She, he hit her, she hit him back. You know, that part isn't in the musical, but even still, she was, she was just stuck. You know, she had the opportunity, like my mom, to make more money, and she didn't know what to do. Mm -hmm. And so it's almost like, I've heard someone say that money doesn't equal maturity. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so she takes care of this, this little boy, Noah, uh, who she does more for him than because of the circumstances that she can for her own kids. Um, and you said earlier that this moment is defining for you. Mm -hmm. How is it defining? Well, it's the most present that I've ever been in my life. It took a year to train for this role and really in, in surrender, I, I came to realize that I wasn't really training for the role. I was really becoming Julie. Mm -hmm. The Julie I've always known I could be, but I was afraid. You know, I always thought I'd be kind of like cheating on music mm -hmm. if I did mus a, a musical um, production or, you know, if I just decided to sit like I'm writing a memoir. If I take time to write a book, what's going to happen to my music career? And all these fears. But it wasn't until Mummy, you know, Mummy transitioned in 2018, mm -hmm. 2017, excuse me. And I often say her last breath became my first breath. And now I, I just, I fear less. It's not about being fearless, you know. But Do I you feel, feel her less. presence? Well, this must mm -hmm. be, um, it is a defining moment for you. But as you mentioned, your mom uh, died a few years ago. Yeah. Uh, what's it like to go through this moment without her by your side? Oh, it's very tough, you know, but there's times where, where when Caroline comes upon me and it, it's, I never thought I'd be that like actor that's like, oh yeah, the character just comes through. It's a whole other thing. Mm -hmm. And I, I feel, I don't feel mom's presence when we like, yeah, I feel around me. Hey, what up mom? It's not like that, but it's, it's in my mannerisms. It's in the wisdom. It's in the it's in the the letting go. It's in the grace. You know, it's, you could be angry and still have grace. Mm -hmm. You know, you could have pain and still have grace. Mm -hmm. You know, and meekness isn't weakness. Like all these things that mom taught me. I've always through. thought that anger is a useful emotion. Yeah, if you use it the right way. Channel, just, mm -hmm. yeah, channel it. And really, for me, when anger comes upon me, I go in. It's like, okay, what's what's really causing this this pain? Because it's rooted in fear. Mm -hmm. In fact, anger. Fear of what? Fear of, you know, fear of the unknown, fear of being judged, fear of, um, you know, not having enough. Like everything that to me, I learned this from Marianne um, Williamson actually, that it isn't love and hate, it's love and fear. Yeah. So all pain comes from fear. All hate comes from fear. War, fear, mm. power, fear. Mm -hmm. It all comes from fear. Well, Caroline seems to live a double life. As you mentioned, she uh, is mother to four um, and she's also, a mother kind of to Noah, the mm. child of the family that she takes care of. She's very measured um, in everything that she does. And it, it kind of feels like she needs to be measured. Mm -hmm. um, what impact does this have on her? 
Well, it's um, the results are definitely in the routine. I say that about my own life, but the results in with Caroline having such a, that, a measured life, it's like a thirty dollars a week. You know, this is I come. It's like, I call it Groundhog Day. When I started to get into her life, it's like wow, same thing again, same thing again. So imagine, like I imagined her life having to do the same exact thing every day and not necessarily find the joys. Mm. But in her basement, where she gets to light her one cigarette a day she finds some joy, mm -hmm. you know? And, and interestingly enough, it's not something that I support as far as smoking, et cetera. Mm -hmm. But what's, what it's taught me is that what's gonna fill your joy bank? What is it for mm -hmm. you? Is it reading? Is it taking a walk? Is it just taking four breaths? What is that thing? As long as you have that thing. Yeah, what is that thing? Mm -hmm. And for Caroline, it's also her faith. She's a woman of God. Mm -hmm. She had to go to her church, you know, and pray. You know, but also I see some of the church women that I grew up with where they, took the six days to, to mull and be angry and waited till the seventh day to deal with their pain, to get prayed off, to, to wash it off with faith. But that, and that, that's also something that, you know, um, it, it sets a lot of women back. Mm -hmm. Well, Caroline's story takes place in the United States uh, during the civil rights movement. Mm -hmm. Your own family emigrated to Canada from Jamaica. Did you see parallels of Caroline's story with your mother's story? Mainly being a yes, the main part is her being a woman that decided to raise her kids over dating again or, you know, socializing. You know, my mom committed to, after my parents divorced, she, she decided to, I'm going to be 100% mom and not date. So that's the part I wish my mom actually did. I'm like, honey, you know, you had nine kids. Like, come on, you know. Um, but to know that my mom decided to educate herself, not be afraid to apply for another job. She applied to General Motors Canada mm -hmm. and she worked there and she raised us off of that income, which was awesome. She came in as a domestic and she, she wasn't afraid, you know? So that's, that's the part where there's a character named Dottie, my best friend in the musical. Dottie's my mom, mm -hmm. yeah. Um, well, the family that Caroline works for wouldn't be able to function um, the way it does if Caroline were to leave. <sighs> Yet she feels like a ghost in, her, in their family, uh, despite knowing the family's most intimate details. Mm -hmm. um, you, you said that your mom worked as a domestic um, worker. Did your mother ever share stories with you of what it was like for her? She did actually, and I have it recorded. I have it on voice note. Mm -hmm. You know, she, she enjoyed the, the opportunity because my mom before me had seven kids, so she in Jamaica. So that afforded her the opportunity to send her kids to school, had to buy uniforms, mm -hmm. et cetera. But she also said that they trusted her. And she said, there's, there's other domestics that work there and they would test them and leave money out and leave to valuables out to it. see if they would take it, mm. right? And many of those women got fired. Mm -hmm. You know, eventually my mom was the key holder and she felt proud. She said, yeah, they left me the key. Mm -hmm. They go on vacation. And, you know, so she started to feel like that house was her house. In the play, Carolina Change, um, mm -hmm. it is taking the backdrop of the civil rights movement. Um, when your mother left Jamaica, do you think that she was ever allowed to mourn the loss of her country? Um, mm. And if she, you know, did you, did she ever talk to you about what that meant? Because she wanted to create a better life for all of you. Yeah, she did actually. She, it was very, very challenging, a lot of pain. In fact, I have a sister who passed away that I didn't get to meet. Her name was Colleen, she was 11. So my mom came to Canada, worked for $1.65 an hour mm -hmm. as a domestic, was able to save to bring her children up one by one by one. However, she had to go home and bury her daughter. Yeah. So there was th that sacrifice, mm -hmm. you know, as a mother and to go back. And, but she also said that fueled her to be able to get another job, to make sure that she has to get her kids to Canada even faster. And to create a life where you one day are on stage. Yeah. Um, we often hear about the black experience in the United States. Mm -hmm. uh, how important is it to tell the Canadian story? Oh my goodness, see, I, it's important, number one. It's very, very important. And I'm still learning the Canadian experience as far as the Isn't history. Isn't it weird? Because we don't learn it in school. We don't learn it in school, Yeah. you know? So I'm really I'm hopeful that in sharing Caroline's experience, because at the end of the day, all of us as women, women of color have experienced so many like similar things. And I think that we're so um, intrigued by the American story mm -hmm. that we just, we perk up and we listen. So I'm hoping that through this story, mm -hmm. that we'll be able to now create conversations. I want schools to come out, you know, organizations to come out so that it's not just an entertainment, you know, experience. Like, let's continue the conversation. You shared um, your mother's passing on Instagram. Mm -hmm. um, and before she died, you were her caregiver. Yes. What was it like to go from the child to the parent? Ooh, that's a big, well, now you're getting me today. <laughs> 
Well, um, well, it was beautiful, I'll be honest. My, I'm the youngest of nine, and there's, there's a 20 year gap between us. Mm -hmm. So I was raised by all of my siblings. So, but they are married and they've moved to America, et cetera. So, you know, after my other sister passed away, I helped to raise her kids. And so it was, it was really an honor mm -hmm. to, to care for mom. But I realized what mom couldn't do for herself, like when she became bedridden, I don't know how true this is, but in my heart and my spirit, it was time for her to go. Mm -hmm. She knew that all of us could take care of ourselves, that, her, you know, her late daughter, Sharon, her kids were now 30, everybody's on their own. Mom turned 81, and it was, I believe she just was like, all right, we're, I'm not, I, she's so used to taking care of us. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, your face is on posters throughout the city. Um, <laughs> I've seen you. The strangest you. thing ever. <laughs> what was it like the first time you saw it? Like, or someone sent you a DM showing it to you? Yeah, I, I, I weeped, I boohooed, because when I see it, I see my mom, I mm -hmm. see my aunts. I don't see Julie Black. Mm -hmm. Like, I, I, I see Julianne Gordon. I see who I am, not who I've become. But I, I, that, Photo, and I think it's the, the uniform and just the, the spirit that comes through in my eyes. Mm -hmm. if I see, it's Caroline, mm -hmm. you know, and it's Agatha, which is my mom's name. You grew up in uh, the Jane and Finch uh, neighborhood in North Toronto. Yeah. Um, a few years ago, you actually went back to your neighborhood with CBC. Mm -hmm. uh, we've got a clip from that. Ah. Um, can we take a look at this? Oh my gosh, Control. you guys are awesome. It's crazy, this seemed so high when I was little. Which was your year? 122. It's Street coming up. I think the lights on. Hey. Just unreal. Like, wow. Hey. Looking at it, my bedroom right there. What does uh, the Jane and Finch neighborhood mean to you? Everything. It's the, some of the best days of my life. You know, I didn't experience racism. You know, I often say it's like my I had one friend named Chi Gang, Johnny Papa Spiros, Jyoti Patel, all walks of life. Mm -hmm. And, um, and I didn't go without. I said this on an Instagram post recently, that my mom raised us as a mother who became single. But I, we weren't poor. Mm -hmm. We didn't suffer. We ate well. Mm -hmm. And we had enough. We had overflow. Mm -hmm. Mom made sure everybody eats. Everybody eats, mm -hmm. you know? I wish I had tissue. Yeah, I oh, okay. tissue. It's okay, it's real, um, it's raw. No, because I, the reason why I wanted to ask you that question is that, you know, when you do hear about Jane and Finch, um, on the news, it's always referred to as at an at-risk neighborhood. Mm -hmm. um, were you aware of how your neighborhood was perceived growing up as a child? 100%. I was aware, and we as, um, we... Let me just grab, <laughs> grab can, I, can I just grab, yeah, Tony. <laughs> Thank you so much, Tony. So, Thank you. Thanks, Tony. I love You're that. You're a gem. Oh, awesome. Yeah. Um, we knew that, we, we understood the lies even as young as eight, nine, 10 years old, we knew that we were safe. I was a latchkey kid. We were walking and bullets weren't flying. Mm -hmm. But you know, with, whether it's like Luther Brown or Jay Blaze or Dwight Drummond, like we all were like, all right, let's, let's make sure we represent our community and show that great things and great people are raised and come out of Jane and Finch. So, so you, it was a fuel. It, so was it, oh, so were you, during this whole process, because I think the first time I saw you on stage mm -hmm. was in the Northern Virginia. Because we're still both 25. Hello. Uh, and I remember looking, uh, you were uh, wearing this white outfit, crisscross. Mm -hmm. um, from that time when you were performing at Honey Jam, was there a part of your, um, part of in, in the back of your mind that you were representing not just yourself and your family, but your neighborhood? 100%, always, to this day. Always, so there was a time where they would call me Jaden Finch Julie, mm -mm. you know. But I knew that there was a, there was there was a bit of a okay. There's negative. There was a negative connotation. Like if I was being bold, if I had an opinion, you know, and I wasn't angry. So I had to really dispel a lot of those, you know, th th just change that narrative completely. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I knew. But why do you think Jane and because uh, you hear bad news happening throughout the city, mm -hmm. uh, unfortunately? Why do you think there is such a spotlight on Jane and Finch in that way? I, I really, I wonder, I often wonder. I think that, um, I think there was just, just one too many incidents happened and the, and the media shared it in that way. Where, because Jane and Finch is an intersection. Mm -hmm. There's no houses on Jane and Finch, in fact, you know? But if it was Weston Road or Jane and Wilson or Jane and, anything off Jane, mm -hmm. it became Finch. And so it just racked up. Mm -hmm. Well, the change in the title of Caroline on Change is a play on words, I think, because um, you have to watch the play to 
realize what the other change yeah. is. Um, but I, in my view, it's also about personal growth. Um, how have you how how have you grown during this process? Oh my gosh, Nam, this I I don't even recognize myself mm. in the most beautiful way. My femininity and being able to be present and and you know, I was raised to be generous. My mom would give no matter what, so that's mm -hmm. in me on a molecular level. However, now it's like the commodity of time. Mm. You know, just... You're aware of your own mortality? Abs 100%. Oh, my goodness. After my mom, especially, because my mom, she didn't have the education, but she had the wisdom. Mm -hmm. And after she passed, I went into this, she had this blue treasure chest, and I opened it up, and it just said in Sharpie, important documents mm -hmm. in Sharpie. And I opened it up, will, power of attorney. My mom knew what was popping. In, in years, it was already in place. And I'm sitting there as an as a entrepreneur, businesswoman, CEO, CEO, girl power, no will, no power of attorney, no. No, I thought I instantly. Mm. says, guess what? We plan for the baby to arrive. We paint the room. We get we have baby shower. And that's not even guaranteed. But the exit is guaranteed. Mm -hmm. So I, I found a new purpose in, in estates and in having people really not be afraid. Mm -hmm. That it's, it's coming. And for those of us who have parents who are seniors, advocate for them. Go to their doctor's appointments mm -hmm. with them. Mm -hmm. Show up for the, Show the up. way they showed up for you. That's right. Mm -hmm. Thank you. I couldn't have said it any better. Um, I also get the sense that this is beyond art. This is beyond singing. Yeah. Um, there is a bigger purpose. There's a, there's a, because you do give back a lot to uh, your community. Um, and it's not just on girls that you focus on, you focus mm. on boys. Yes. Um, why is mentorship so important to you? Oh my goodness, to have a mentor, it's, I, I think it's more important than even like the, the friends that you keep or even the church that you go to or you know, even the siblings and, and your parents, like your mentor, like Lisa Washington's my mentor. Like I, I sought out somebody who has walked the road, not even in music, mm -hmm. you know, a business mentor, somebody who's gonna gonna check me when I'm when I'm being you know overly sensitive, you know when I'm fighting battles that I just don't have to fight, you know mentorship is important. I, I mean I love it. I have mentees, and but I think you have to make sure that your intention is is, is set. It's not about self praise, and that's where sometimes it get you know it can get we can get off the grid a bit where it's like I'm a mentor. I have a mentor. That's the ego. Mm -hmm. You know, what's, why do you want to pour into these people? And really, we're setting them up for, to have deep, firm roots. I think with social media, mm -hmm. there's, a, there's so many, the, the kids, the youth are distracted. Mm -hmm. They're sitting down, they're looking at people's prime time, prime time. I said, we have this prime, my best friend and I, we talk about the prime time in the meantime. The best highlights. Right, yeah. yeah. Sitting in the meantime, looking at their prime time. Mm -hmm. Like right now, this is a prime time moment. Mm -hmm. And we're gonna post to people like, oh, Julian Nam, Julian Nam. And then some may wonder, oh, what, what about me? Mm -hmm. Hey, create your prime time, prepare. Mm -hmm. Like Caroline, I've been prepared for one year. Mm -hmm. One year to do this two week run. And the rehearsals have been <sighs> like from morning until night. 10 and a half hours. Um, what do you think this moment means for all these young people that are watching? I know now I'm using young people. Yeah, we're not young okay. people anymore. Yeah, we're young. But what does this moment mean for all these young people to see you on stage, commanding the stage in front of so many, uh, in front of the whole city mm -hmm. uh, in a play um, of this importance? I think it means possibility. It means uh, resilience you know, um, relevant in a whole other way. Like people are chasing relevance with chart numbers and financial wealth and this, that, you know, it's just like to know that I'm born here, from here. And there were times, you know, pre-mom passing away that I was like, hey, I felt invisible. And then I started to blame industry, 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 industry. It's like, you know what, Julie? Like before there was even a possibility to have a song on the radio, I just love to sing mm -hmm. everywhere. Mm -hmm. And it's, it's like the outlier, and I just kept singing, kept singing, kept singing. And I racked up my 10,000 hours, and here I am. And so I want the youth, especially the young people, the younger people, because we're young, to, uh, to, to really focus on grooming their craft mastery. You know, I, look at Kobe, you know, God rest his soul. Like, the, the, at 41, he's full life, complete, full. Right? And how full is your life? How, what do you want your legacy to be? And put in the work. 
put in the work. Mm. Look at you. <laughs> Julie, it's been so great having oh, you here. Congratulations you. on this. Um, and if you do get the opportunity to see Julie on stage, go now. Thanks, man. Congrats again. Thank you. <laughs> The Agenda with Steve Pakin is brought to you by the Chartered Professional Accountants of Ontario. CPA Ontario is a regulator, an educator, a thought leader, and an advocate. We protect the public. We advance our profession. We guide our CPAs. We are CPA Ontario. And by viewers like you. Thank you.